Uh, Mac had a beautiful bass voice from the Lord, and he used it as much as he could for him uh, right on this very platform. And so we want to sing one of his favorite songs, uh, Beulah Land. And I love the fact that he couldn't wait to be with Jesus. And I also love the fact that we know where he is. And in, in Christ, <coughs> that's our home. And our brothers and sisters who go there before us, it's never goodbye. It's we'll see you later. So this is Beulah Land, and I uh, hope you're blessed by it. <clears throat> I'm kind of homesick kind of for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbyes will there be spoken for time won't matter anymore you love I'm longing for you and someday on the I'll stand there my home faith will end inside. There's just a few, just a few more days to labor. Then I will take, I will take my, my heavenly flight. flight. You Someday on the I'll stand. There my home shall be eternal. You are sweet you are All right, <clears throat> I appreciate that. I thought maybe Brandon would sing the bass, but <laughs> afraid that couldn't happen. Okay, those of you who are gonna go into junior church, you can, you can dismiss at this time. And the rest of us, I'd like you to open up in your Bibles to Revelation chapter one. And if you need a head start, on Psalm chapter 30, Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, if we read verse 17 and verse 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. And then over in Psalm chapter 30, just one verse. In verse 5, Psalm chapter 30, verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. 
So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for the hymn in really remembrance of our brother. We thank you for the spirit of the people that are here. I pray that most, if not all, are born again. They know Christ as their savior, not from anything they've done, but from everything that you've done through Christ and received him by faith. We come knowing that apart from you, we can do nothing. I am, of all people, well aware of that. And so we come to you and ask that you superintend here in a, in a very special way. Nothing about death is ever supposed to be pretty or comfortable. It's horrible. It separates loved ones. All we have are memories. Many of them good, some bad. And so you know our hearts, you know the heart of everybody, everybody that's here today. And I just ask you do what I cannot do. And that wherever we are spiritually, we, we will either come to Christ or as, as believers, we'll live for him while we have the time to do it. So we ask all this now in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I wanna, I wanna say a few things about our, our brother and our sister. Uh, I, felt, I felt that these are things that are, that are on my heart and uh, I don't want anyone to think that I'm the bottom line on this. Uh, there, there's some things that you know that I didn't know and, uh, and vice versa. But I'm gonna say a few things. Um, and again, I think most of these you know. I know that he loved working with border collies and he did well with that. I think he had a, a tremendous reputation for that and in competitions brought many trophies back home. By the way, it's always good when you love your job. Really, people that don't love what they do usually don't last very long at, at what they do. Uh, and if you do it for money, you're gonna be disappointed. You do it because this is what the Lord gave you and you do it well to the best of your ability and you leave the results with him. And that's always a good thing. I know that he, uh, Loved to sing at church. Uh, it was a difficult thing for him to let go of that. He did not sing for himself, nor for man's applause, uh, but to glorify the Lord. And in, in today's uh, performances, many times all people want is the acclamation uh, from people. He didn't seek that. And you could tell. By the way, on that subject, uh, he became very frustrated when the scheduled time for choir practice was not adhered to, and he let you know it. <laughs> he didn't keep quiet about that. He said, hey, we're supposed to start at 5.30, not quarter to six, you know, on and on you'd go. Uh, he appreciated the children here, and they were drawn to him. It, it, he didn't have to advertise himself, but they were just drawn to him. And he was very protective for them uh, when he found out, you know, there were abuses being done. And he even wanted to take a certain situation into his own hands. I would not want to see him when he was mad. Uh, he was a back row Baptist. So Margaret's at home. <laughs> and Jim and Karen are at home. Maybe, I don't know if you're back row Baptist or not, but I couldn't move him anywhere else. 
I even tried the Japanese fire drills, but we called them Japanese pew drills, and he would not move. He was stuck there. That's just where he was. Uh, he was fiercely loyal to his local church, knowing it was the visible place of God's will and blessing. And even though he had one of the longest drives here, uh, he was here except for sickness for every service. And that's remarkable. I mean, even up till, I'd say, a month and a half ago. He was not perfect. He needed a savior just like the rest of us. And I'll say about a little bit more about that. Uh, in our memory verse section this morning, even Mary needed a savior. It's quite different from what you get in the, the religious circle today, in one of them. But he, he, he knew who he was, and he, he did what he did in order to, to just be, a, really, I think he wanted to be the best example he could be. He's with the Lord now. He is face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine that. Moses didn't get to see that. Uh, none of us have gotten to see that, but those who have gone home to be with the Lord. Margaret's here with us today. So I want to add some things about her because this is important. I know that she's been the financial brains of the home. She doesn't tell you that, but I know that. I know that she's been a great cook. I am going to miss the Welch cakes. And the, what was the other ones? Shortbread. Shortbread. Yeah, we're going to miss those. If you get back to that, send them. <laughs> really, they were really good. Um, she, in speaking about finances, I mean, it was, it was she that knew what they could afford or what they couldn't afford. And that's always a good thing. Uh, when you have the proper use of money, uh, th that's, that's like a gift, really. Uh, very poised, well-dressed all the time, whether it's here or home. Uh, nothing, nothing changes. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just, I am just glad for the opportunity that we have to have spent with her. Now, I have something else I've wanted to say, but one of, my, one of my things got messed up here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go without that. Um, in being poised, I don't know, Bob Barton's not here today, but his mom was Kay Day. Many of you, this is before your time. And Kay Day was a, a, a loyal humorist. At any, at any time she would, she would give to me or she would tell these, these crazy jokes that were just through the roof. Well, Margaret wasn't like that. Margaret's very, very almost stoic. And then all of a sudden one day she comes out with something that is absolutely hilarious and, and everybody's taken back. What happened? What happened to Margaret? And then from that time forward, they get more and more and more of those. So this, this, is, this is important. I mean, this is, this is who she is. And so I'm, I'm really glad about that. Uh, from there, I, I guess we really never knew what was going to come out of her mouth. Um, the insert that we put in the bulletin uh, says a lot more if you take the time to, to read it. Actually, why don't you let me, let me read it. Um, this is, this is if, you, if you have that, this is uh, from the church. In appreciation, Thank you, Lord, for allowing this local church and all its people to worship together in spirit and in truth, and there's a word missing, with Morris and Margaret McGregor. 
for the better part of three decades. We've been tested, tried, victorious, and discouraged, confused and grateful for your mercy and grace through it all. Your will was to take Morris, he's also called Mac, Katie called him Doc, to be with you July 23rd of this year, and we're extremely happy for him, yet concerned and prayerful for all that loved him in Christ, as well as all his relatives. His plans, God's plans, that is, as were ours, was to hold out until the rapture, I mean Morris's plan, to the rapture. He was earnestly waiting for you to take him and all of us here who are saved to be with you. Now, dear brother, you are home, but still waiting, this time for the redemption of your body, Romans 8, 23. And it will be soon. Your will also allowed Margaret to share all the blessings and testings with her husband. She has been found faithful in all that she has done for him, for all of us, and for her local church. We know she will go north to be with family. We will miss, miss her immensely, yet love her endlessly. Thank you, Father. We didn't. We did not deserve them, but definitely appreciate them. We are a better church because of them. Nothing there is made up. Nothing there is embellished. Everything there is strictly from the heart of our people. Life is a gift. It's a complex commodity, not to be taken lightly, especially in the light of the fact that it could end at any moment. That you are here today, that, that you people that might be watching or pick up a, a recording of this um, is a gift from God. You, you have right now, uh, maybe you have another hour or two you might have to this day, or week, or month, or year, but you don't know from, from any, anything forward. Every one of us here that have had a serious life-threatening disease, or infection, or accident, Marilyn and Howard years ago uh, were in an accident that killed one of their friends and, and really, uh, impaired Howard uh, ever since. Uh, we know, uh, and, and we know that we've overcome it by the grace of God. And we know well of what we speak. Every day is a gift from God. So turn with me to Psalm 39, Psalm 39. This is one of the many verses that speaks about the brevity of life. Verse four, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. We are a frail people. Sometimes when we're young, we think we're pretty strong and what we do keeps us strong and and so forth, and it's all, all of the flesh. And, and I've seen some young people in the prime of life taken out just as much as, as Morris was in 91. For one who thinks lightly or that they are in control of life and die without Christ as Savior, they will realize quite quickly too late how foolish and basically idiotic it was for never calling on, on Christ to save them when they had that opportunity. Now, you're here today. You have that opportunity. People last week, had, and they've had it week after week, and some still have never seized the opportunity. But I'll tell you, the moment you die, that opportunity ends, 
and you will see how foolish you were. Psalm 90, Psalm chapter 90. I want to start reading here in verse 9. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Every one of us that have reached three score and ten and are working on the next ten know the truth of that verse. You may, you may approach that, but it is going to take strength and sorrow to do it. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You are more close to death than you realize. And you better do something with it while you have it, because once this earthly lives, life ends, the spiritual life begins. Heaven or hell? No alternatives. Isaiah 46. Isaiah chapter 46. The context here is Jewish. The application is universal. Verse 4, 46, 4. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to her hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. What a great promise. What great comfort is in that promise. And in foreboding days, especially in foreboding days, when we fo focus on probably what is going to uh, lie behind the veil of, of an impenetrable future, whatever comes our way, just looking at that verse, we may turn in confidence to the Lord because he knows just how much we can bear. Because he has made us. Look there at the end of that verse. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. Old age, silver haired or no hair. Husbands sometimes, wives sometimes, children, friends, all may be gone. And realistically, we may be left alone. Hebrews chapter 13 gives us comfort on comfort. Hebrews chapter 13 gives us the comfort if we come that direction. Hebrews 13 and look at verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So not only does he provide comfort all the way through, but he'll never leave you, ever. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians 15. Toward the end of the chapter, right after the, the verses that deal with being taken away from here in the twinkling of an eye. And I'll read that. And look down here in verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Not everybody, there's coming a time when really not everybody's gonna die. 
but we're all going to be changed. So he's speaking about those who are alive. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. What a blessing to know that there is the possibility, and that that possibility is getting closer and closer and closer, that I, even me, at my age, I may not have to die. And that my corruption will take on incorruption. And that those that have died will now see the redemption of their body. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to death the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death is an enemy. Always has been, ever since the garden. Sin is an enemy. I mean, death is an enemy. It's unnatural. And yet death is inescapable, except for the rapture of the church. But when the Lord Jesus Christ, the saved people, is allowed to rule in our hearts, there's victory over the enemy. Not only, not only death, I'm not saying death won't come, but sin, which brings death. We've been saved from the penalty of death. We're being saved from the power of sin. One day we'll be saved, we'll be saved from its presence. Proverbs chapter 30. Let's go back to chapter, I mean, Psalm chapter 30. Psalm chapter 30. Now I'll read this once again. Psalm chap chapter 34, in his, verse 5, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weepeth may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. There are things here for all of God's children by faith in Christ, which I will leave you uh, to pour over, the first two, and then I'll say something about the third. But we see in that verse the night of doubt. I don't know what's ahead. I, just, I, can't, I don't have that figured out. And then the morning of faith, the night of perplexity, the morning of vision, and then thirdly, the night of bereavement, the morning of reunion. Loved ones that have gone on before us, Morris is going. Their stay with us is too short. We really had only begun to understand the sweetness and the beauty. I'm incorporating everybody that's gone on before us. Face it, how little we dreamed that we would only be allowed to, to sip a, a cup of joy they brought into our lives. And then they heard it, the voice. And it called, and a hand was extended, and they arose and went. Here's a hymn that, it's not in our hymn book, it's in another one. Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore. Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love and power. The third stanza says, come ye weary, heavy laden, lost and ruined by the fall. If you tarry till you're better, you will never come at all. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of my dear Savior. Oh, there are 10,000 charms. We saw nothing. We saw nothing of that, uh, save through the, through the faith of God's word. Nothing, nothing there was visible to see. 
Christ came to, to seek and to save sinners like you and me. Right here in verse 5, the, the night of weeping really is there, but joy cometh in the morning. And we'll never recede when we see our, our Savior face to face. And that there'll be no downfall, no, no roller coaster rides of joy and, and, and sorrow and pain. It'll be all be joy eternally, everlastingly. And it'll be on Morris's face, it probably is already, and on the faces of others that have gone and hopefully uh, when we go, and not only will we see our Lord, but probably each other as well. Don't be afraid of the mystery of death or its loneliness or what comes after. Because if you are, you'll not live. You will not live. Oh, you'll have breath, but you won't live. You won't serve the Lord because you're caught up in the mystery of death. What happened when the, when the so-called pandemic hit? And people began to fear the invisible. So much so that some still have never returned. They can't live. They're alive, but they can't live. What do we have to fear? We who are saved, what happens after we die? We go home to be with the Lord. Why is that so, such a bad thing? And as, as the earth becomes worse and worse, isn't it, isn't it looking better and better? I mean, I don't seek death. I don't necessarily want it. But if it comes, and when I, when I, had the, when I was told I had the cancer, I had to go and sit down and have a little meeting with the Lord before I picked up some things at the drugstore. And I said, all my entire life as a, as a believer and as a preacher has, has been, you know, the Lord can do with you as he pleases. And I have, to, I have to reconcile that to myself. And if you want to take me home, so be it. And if you want to leave me here, so be it. I never, I never has thought of it ever since. I, I knew it wasn't up to me. I knew it was up to him. Don't be afraid of, of, of that or what comes after. The, the curse and penalty of sin have been put away forever for all the saved. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. In verse 3, and this has to do with people who are born again, redeemed, justified, have salvation in Christ. Of course, it was written in the Old Testament. It has to do with Israel again. Context, Jewish, application, everyone. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. What a great thing trust and faith are to each other. And when you find out more and more as things go south, how much we trust as opposed to how much we think it's in our hands. We have had to trust the Lord on the things that I never dreamt I'd have to trust the Lord on. Out of my control, totally. But if the Lord the promise is that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, not the circumstance. Verse 26, or verse 4. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. The love of God is everlasting. It is like a cleft rock, the age-long shelter of God's people that stands above the storms of time. Go back here in, in Exodus chapter 30. This is worth looking at, Exodus chapter 30. Moses and the Lord are, are talking here. 
Exodus chapter 30. And I want you to look here in verse 20. Exodus chapter 30, verse 20. I'm sorry, 33. Excuse me. 33. Yep, that's it. Verse 20. And he said, the Lord is speaking to Moses, Thou canst not see my face, for thou shalt no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a in a cleft of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. The lightning that flashed from the thunderclouds of Calvary have left a cleft made by the spear that pierced the side and heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. We sing the hymn Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. That's our refuge. The love of God is free. It holds all that the soul needs. Everything that my soul needs is found in God's love. And it is forever. It doesn't dissipate. It doesn't increase necessarily. It just stays the same. It is absolute. Christ, of course, came, Luke 19, 10, to seek and to save me. And you, and you, and you, and you, sinners. Seek and to save sinners. And uh, to do that, he lived a sinless life. I, don't, I, know, I know that he did that, but I have no idea what that even means. There's no, there's no thought, there's no deed, there's no work, nothing of a sinful nature. I will know, but I don't know that yet. He shed his blood to pay our entire sin debt. I wasn't raised that way. I wasn't raised on the blood of Christ at all. I don't even think I heard about the blood of Christ until after I was saved. When I found out when, when that blood was shed, all of my sins were put on Christ. Well, I wasn't there, but yes, I was there. And all of it was paid in full. We sing the hymn, Jesus paid it all. He did. If you want to go into up to hell, what a shame that you would not trust Christ and receive the forgiveness that he offers with a sin debt that was paid that you will never be able to pay in eternity. And he offers, after he, he died and was buried and rose again, he offers to everyone salvation in him <clears throat> by faith alone as you receive him by faith. So <clears throat> here's your opportunity. <clears throat> to be saved. If you're on live stream, here is your opportunity to be saved. Or not saved. Or if you are saved, to predetermine to use what little time we have left for the Lord. In other words, live for him, not ourselves. When the Lord came, did he live for himself? Did he do everything for himself? No, it's always for others. We've turned churches into places of celebration and, and, and just everything inclusive. We're not so much concerned about the lost. Our Lord was. He left us his example. He said, you, you'll be able to do much more than I was to do while I was here on earth. Many people are just shutting down. And a lot of that, if I'm going back to the mystery of death. Don't fear it. Don't fear anything.
If I had something that was more valuable than life itself in my power to give you and would not offer that to you, I would be, of most people, reprehensible. And you, if you had the power to receive it, but refused it, would be more than reprehensible. And we ought to do this. Uh, Or, like I said, you can lose the opportunity. Go back to Jeremiah, or go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6. I have two two, uh, Old Testament characters in the New Testament. Here's the first one, Jeremiah chapter 6. And the Lord speaking to Judah, nation of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Also, I have set watchmen over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. So we move forward into the New Testament, and yet we get an Old Testament example, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, and we'll go down here to verse, excuse me, verse 16. Uh, Start 14, let's start at 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know that for you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So you have the nation of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You have Esau. And in Matthew chapter 23, you have, you have all of Israel. Matthew 23. And let's look, at, <clears throat> let's look here in, in verse 37, 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. A Bible believing preacher comes to to your church or you have a Bible believing preacher and he stands in the pulpit and he calls you in the church to repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And it'd be a church here and it'd be a church there and it'd be different churches in different places. And invariably there are people in every church that say, I will not. and the opportunity is gone. Never to be promised a second time. It was scary for me. I, I had been witnessed to by, by uh, Bible college kids. I had done things with them. Uh, I, I didn't want any part of it. And it wasn't until I met my wife 
and she asked me a question that I could not answer because I didn't understand what she even meant. Are you saved? That set me on the road to at least maybe now I can understand what this is all about. I was riding down the road to Key Biscayne and we went by one of those famous buildings there. I don't know what it's called. And the, we both worked at the Miami Herald. And so he was witnessing to me. And I, I forgot what his name was. But I put my hair, hand on the door handle and I said, you've got to understand if you say one more word, I am out of here. I was serious. I didn't want to hear this. And yet, probably years tra transfer, transpired and somebody is, enough, is concerned enough for my soul and says the most important question ever, are you saved? And, st and said, went home, told her roommate, well, here goes another one. <laughs> it was ready to give up on me. But the Lord wasn't ready to give up on me. And so I sat down with her preacher, two hours. I could not reconcile my life with God's love. I just couldn't. And that he could, he could that he could do everything he said he did and, and forgive me if I would receive him by faith as Savior. And now look. Look what great things God has done. Look at what great things God can do if you'll just allow him. It's never been, it's never been about the profession. It's never been about money. It's never been about acclamation of any kind. Never. It's just being about, I'll do what you give me to do. Uh, I'll try not to ask too many doubtful questions. Uh, there's a number of things that I've done that are, that, you know, we sit down and discuss and think, why did you do that? I have no idea, but I'm willing to do that. Isaiah says to call upon the name of the Lord while he may be found. You know when that is? It's right now. Morris did. I know Margaret has. Many of you have. But I would venture to say not all. Why not seize the opportunity? Why not make this a real blessing I mean, for you, your, in your soul, and as a byproduct for Morris's death. His body's dead. He's not dead. He's with the Lord. Sometimes we forget that. We're not Seventh-day Adventists. You know, the soul isn't going to go into the body in the grave. He's with the Lord. And that's important. All right, last verse, Revelation 1. Well, almost the last verse. Uh, actually, uh, uh, right before Revelation 1 is the book of Jude. And I wanted to say something in there before I say this. In Noah's day, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. At least 100 years, probably 120. People lived a long time then. Nobody in those years that he spelt, that he preached as he was building the ark believed. Nobody. In Jeremiah's day, nobody believed. There were believers but there weren't anybody new. And, and, and when the flood came, it took them all by surprise. 
and it never rained. And now it's raining. They didn't, people didn't even know that that was. And the waters started to come up. The ark was shut. God shut the ark. Everybody inside survived. Everybody outside died, perished forever. Call upon the Lord while he might be, might he may be found. Look at verse 6 and 7, the book of Jude. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around about, cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. People of Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities had no idea what was coming. And even Lot had problems. And if he wasn't delivered, his wife and his two daughters by the angels, he probably might have perished, except he was a righteous man. Those people are set forth for an example, suffering, present tense, the vengeance of eternal fire. If you go back, Old Testament, we're dealing with a thousand or more years. You got 2,000 years after Christ. They're still suffering in vengeance and eternal fire. And it'll never end. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That's now. Revelation chapter 1, which is where we started. Verse 18, 17, and when I saw him, 17, 1, 17, I fell at his feet that it's dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of death and hell. Fear not. Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again. Fear not, he became the first fruits of them that slept. Fear not, you may die, but you will rise again into eternal life, eternal righteousness, or eternal damnation. You have right now. I think, I think the McGregor's left us a great example even unto your old age. And there are struggles, and there are difficulties. They held the line. We as saved people can hold the line. We need to. Let's pray. Father, we, I thank you. for the time you've given us here. I thank you for your, your long suffering, your patience toward anybody that's lost here. Oh, they may be close, they may know the words. They don't know you and you don't know them. I just ask that you impress upon their hearts the need to take care of this while they have the time to do it. For we who are saved and think that we've settled the, the big question of eternal life and now we can just form our lives after ourselves and do what we think is the best thing to do. May we understand how foolish that is. We're here because you left us here to do something for you, not us. And if we're not gonna do that, maybe he just won't leave us here. 
I pray you'd speak to our hearts. We need them spoken to. Death is real. Death is awful. But to a safe place, it's glory. It's Christ. It's eternity. It's blessing. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more pain. Who would have wanted to settle for the alternative? So I pray you'd have your, your way in this invitation. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.